Hello and welcome to Puck It, our inside look at the Arkansas Razorback hockey teams. I'm your host, Maisie Vincent. Coming up, we'll meet the Division Three coach, Colin Essie. We'll talk live with defenseman Sean Foster and we'll try to stump the guys with some trivia. That and more coming up right now on Puck It. Welcome back to Puckett. I'm Maisie Vincent, and I'm joined by the Division Three head coach, Colin Hesse. Coach, thanks so much for joining us. For the viewer's sake and because it's our first episode of Puckett, can you explain how the hockey program here at the U of A works? Absolutely. So we are a club sport, and what that means is we're not supported through the athletic department. We're just like any other club sport. Uh, so what we do is we recruit all throughout the country of the guys that don't necessarily get those opportunities to play at the NCAA level. Uh, we get them here to Arkansas, and we get them into club sports, and that's how we do it. Well, because you aren't funded by the athletic department, how do you fund your team and traveling? So we're a pay-to-play club, so all the players have to play – or pay a certain amount of dues each year, uh, which is about $3,800. Uh, what that does is that provides them game jerseys, practice jerseys, workout gear, uh, hockey bags, things like that. They're uh, lodging on the road, travel, and basically everything except for their food uh, on the road. So uh, we try and make it as cheap as possible, but uh, it's not always the case. But uh, that just shows how much passion these guys have for the game. Well, you didn't mention a coach's salary. So why do you devote so much of your time into coaching these guys? Uh, just because of my love for the game. Uh, I like being around the guys. Uh, it's fun. Uh, it was a good opportunity for me to stick around the game after I uh, couldn't play anymore. Um, but it's a starting point for me in my co coaching career, and uh, it's just a good opportunity for me. I went to school here, love the boys, love what we're doing here. And uh, it does it's a lot of work, but uh, I wouldn't have it any other way. Well, what sparked your interest in coaching? Uh, good question. Uh, so I got hurt uh, in when I was playing here and what that created was an opportunity for me to become a student assistant coach uh, that was given to me by our D1 head coach Brian Galini uh, and I took that opportunity and ran with it uh, and I've never looked back since. Well since being, you're on the other side your team is 10 and 5 on the season after beating Mississippi State 38 to 1 over <laughs> the weekend. Wow I wish we had footage for that but we're going to take it back a week and talk about your game against Kansas. So let's take a look. It's the first period in your scoreless. What's going on, Coach Hesse? So right here, uh, we have a bad four check. We have three guys on the ice. We have an opportunity to get the puck deep. We don't. Kansas gets the puck. They get it into our D zone. We have a miscommunication in our D zone, which leaves the uh, front of the net open. They get an opportunity and capitalize. And now we're down one nothing. Uh, we have to battle back into the game. So. Well, y'all did come back. The game is tied. This is overtime. Oh my goodness, what's happening? So right here, there's a lot of time and space because it's only four on four. Uh, so we just try and get as many pucks as we can to the net. Right here, you're gonna see uh, the puck go to the defenseman. He gets the puck to the net. We do a good job of capitalizing on getting that rebound. Uh, and then a good hockey player makes a good play, gets a good shot on net and wins the game for us. Well, what a good W on paper. So you are 10-5 and five on the season. So, Coach, tell me, how are you feeling about the season? Oh, I'm feeling really good right now. Our team's really connected. We're on a, a good vibe right now. We're, doing, we're beating good teams, uh, playing a tough schedule, uh, and everything's going right. Uh, right now, no issues with anything. Uh, we're playing well. We're cleaning up a few things system-wise, um, but that's, you know, pretty complicated to get into. But uh, we're... I'm feeling pretty good about it right now. Well, good luck on your rest of your season. Thank you so much for joining us. Coming up later in the show, we will have a commentary on why the athletic department should be supporting this program. But next, we'll inter introduce to you Sean Foster and his compelling journey to Arkansas. Puckett is coming right back. Welcome back to Puckett. Well, every player on these teams has taken their own journey to get here, but none may be as interesting as Division I defenseman Sean Foster. For more on that, we send it over to Anna Thrash. 
Thank you, Maisie. I'm sitting here with Sean Foster. Now, Sean, both of your parents are deaf. Tell me about what it was like growing up with those parents. Um, uh, they're great. Uh, it was uh, really unique. I didn't really realize until probably about the fourth grade that I was set differently than my peers. Um, it was fun. It was normal, I guess, for me. So, yeah. so why was it unique? Uh, I mean, I, it was just... Like I could do kind of whatever I wanted and just I had to learn more on my own than other people because they kind of had that parental figure and, and stuff like that. I mean, not that they weren't parental figures, but it was just more freelance and kind of individual learning in a sense. Well, what kind of what kind of things did you have to learn on your own? Uh, just like more maturity roles that um, I would do as a kid, uh, like just I don't know, like go to the courthouse if they got a ticket or uh, just basic daily things that a kid would have to do. So what ways do you think that your life is maybe different than a normal college student at this point? Uh, right now it's not. Uh, I don't really feel like it's different because I'm around so many great people like my teammates. Uh, they help me out a lot uh, as far as motivation. Um, but yeah, I, I really don't feel that much different except for I can speak another language and there's multiple people that can speak uh, that are bilingual as well. So so what other language do you know? Uh, sign language and English uh, and then really bad Spanish if that counts. So. Okay, so how do you use sign language, you think? Mo mainly because of your parents is why you uh, learn sign language, yeah, I assume. Yeah, exactly. So, um, well, t tell me about how that is has affected your life. Uh, actually, yeah, so whenever I see people talking with their hands, I think they're doing sign language, so that kind of affects me because I get confused <laughs> a little bit. Uh, but other than that, I mean, it hasn't really, I mean, yeah, it's, it's an awesome language to know and uh, sometimes I get excited whenever I meet another deaf person or somebody else I know sign language, but those are the mm -hmm. impacts. Well, can you tell me about any of those times, you think? Anything that sticks out to you? Uh, yeah, actually, so recently here at the Walmart um, over off MLK, uh, they have a deaf employee there, and she was actually getting out some pen and paper, and I was like, oh, man, cool. So went over there and helped that interaction, and she was really excited because that just doesn't happen as often <laughs> or ever, probably. All right, well, you're a 26-year-old college student right now. Yeah. So that's a little bit different, just a little bit different age gap. Tell me about yeah. what that's like. Uh, yeah, it's, uh, it's interesting. Um, it's, it's a lot of fun. I feel like I've been here before uh, in a weird way, like as far as the social aspects. Um, but, yeah, it's, it's, I'm glad to be getting a really good education. And, yeah, I like it a lot. It's fun. All right, well, thank you for joining me thank today. You. Coming up later on our Hockey 101 segment, we'll explain an aspect of the sport you may not understand. But next, a commentary on why the athletic department here at the U of A is dropping the puck on supporting this hockey program. We'll be right back. Razorback hockey got its start on the ice in 2007, paving the way for one of the fastest growths in American collegiate hockey history. The Ice Hogs have seen much success over the years and want to prove this to the community, but there is one major issue holding them back. For more on this, we send it over to Bradley Bullock. You can find Arkansas's club hockey teams at the Jones Center in Springdale. They hit the ice almost every day. Both squads travel regularly and can miss two to three days worth of class when they do. The Division III team is a five-time conference champion. In fact, it scored 38 goals in two games against Mississippi State last weekend. But any time someone mentions hockey on campus, the usual response is, wait, we have a hockey team? The Ice Hogs are hard at work practicing throughout the week, whether it be early in the morning or in the middle of the day. Players balance school, practice, and travel. But a majority of Arkansas students have no idea that the players representing the Razorbacks on the ice. Professors don't give players the same respect they give other athletes because it is a club sport, not NCAA. Club sport or not, these athletes put in considerable time and effort. Arkansas hockey deserves the same respect as other sports at the U of A. 
The university should recognize them as an official sport and offer them some funding or at least pay the coaches. So yes, Arkansas has hockey teams. They are successful and they are talented. So get out to the Jones Center and support the Razorbacks, even if the athletic department won't. I'm Bradley Bullock, and now we'll send it back over to Maisie. Thanks, Bradley. Well, welcome to Puckett's edition of Hockey 101. This is Poggy Morrison. He's a left wing for the Division I team, and he is going to explain what icing is in the hockey world. What in the world is icing, Paiu? Well, basically, icing is when, say, we're on this side here as the home team. This is the center line. If a player is on their defending side of the ice and they send the puck down, below the goal line, which is in line here, before any player on this team touches it, the ref blows the whistle and has to come all the way back down into the defensive zone. So why would a team purposely ice? Well, sometimes you get in tricky situations where you're down a guy or everybody's tired on the ice, and it's a good way to get a break because they have to skate from this side back down. Well, does it happen a lot? It happens quite frequently. Yeah, it's probably one of the most common whistles that the ref has to blow down, so. Well, I have to ask you a serious question. All right. Have you done it before? I have iced before, yes. <laughs> well, I what have. was your reasoning? Um, sometimes it's on accident, sometimes it's on purpose. Sometimes you're trying to make a pass out and it just doesn't make it, so happens quite frequently. Well, that was perfect. Thank you so much, Paiyu. I hope you don't have to ice very much in the future. I know. That's all we have for Hockey 101. Be sure to tune in next time for a new segment of Hockey 101. Welcome back to Pucket. I'm Ashlyn Brothers. Five countries are represented on these two hockey teams. One of those guys is native Slovakian Joseph Dusinka, who came to the U.S. just two years ago, but is no rookie in the rink. From Slovakia to hog country, Joseph Duzinka has skated his way to a starting goalie position on the university's hockey team. My major is computer science. I was studying it in a high school, so, and I like it. I would like to work in some computer-based firm. He has played hockey in his home country for over half of his life. Who is about 12 years. Well, my dad brought me to the ring and I was skating a few times and I liked it, so. Joseph was in the United States for two years before he finally made his move to Fayetteville. Yes, I've been to New York about four years ago. And then two years ago, I went to play hockey to Marquette in Michigan. And last year I played in Cheyenne in Wyoming. My first plan was to study in America and went to play hockey while studying, so... Well, I just got an offer from the coach from Arkansas Hockey and I said yes. There have been some hurdles that Joseph has had to overcome being a foreign exchange student. I mean, it's not a lot different. There, there's language problem a little bit, but it's getting better. Um, definitely probably the biggest thing, English. Um, we like try to teach him every now and then like the right things to say, um, like the right places and stuff, but definitely English. The language barrier. For someone to come over here that has no idea how to speak English or very little and then to pick it up, it's impressive. Well, I was studying English for about eight years in, uh, in school in Slovakia, but it's, I cannot compare it with the experience here. We learned pretty much grammar and how to write, but I couldn't speak. I, I knew the words, I understood, but I couldn't get the words out of me, but now it's, it's way better. The story of his first English conversation still entertains his teammates. I was in practice and uh, we had like a game and who lost had to eat onion and I said I didn't understand the reason why we have to eat onions so I asked like why do we have to eat that onion. Not only has he worked hard to overcome the language barriers but his teammates all see how hard he works on the ice as well. His work ethic on the ice he doesn't take a he doesn't take a rep off he always he's always his, his head is always in the game. Like you said it's a brotherhood we're always here for him anything he needs he can always come to us. He says he is enjoying his time here in the States, 
but there are a couple of things that he tends to miss. The food is different, and he says the girls are prettier, which I don't know. I don't know about that. Duzinka says when he graduates in 2021, he will decide whether to return to Slovakia or make a new home here in the U.S. Up next, we have teammate trivia. Stay tuned. We'll be right back. Welcome back to Pocket. We are about to test these hockey players' knowledge. I'm joined with Division One forwards Jacob Brown and Luke Gratisart. Are you ready, guys? Okay, so. I'm about to ask you seven questions. If you know the answer, buzz in as fast as you can, and don't answer until I say your name. All right, All right you all ready? Yep. Okay, question number one. What are the six original hockey teams? <laughs> Jacob. <laughs> Detroit, Chicago, Montreal, Toronto. Oh, man. They're on my wall at home. Um... That's all I got. Okay. I tried you didn't really hard. get it right. Do you want to get it? Guess? Okay. Detroit, Toronto, Boston. Um, I got nothing. <laughs> I, 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 I forgot Boston, so you did good. All right. So we got five of the six. All right. well, come on, guys. That's, That's no fun. Okay. <laughs> right. I got more than him. Do I get the point? Uh, nope. <laughs> <laughs> all right. Question number two. This is about your coach. What is Coach Galini's favorite NHL team and player? Jacob. Washington Capitals. Player. Oh. Is it Alexander Ovechkin? No. I don't know. Go. Washington Capitals, Nicholas Backstrom. Yes. What? How do you know okay. that? Okay. Mm -hmm. Juan for Luke. All right. Next question. What is the largest ocean in the world? Pacific. Good job. <laughs> okay. <laughs> All right. Name three wars that are not world wars. Luke. Civil war. Uh, Iraq war. Does that count? Yeah. Okay. One more. Don't give me. <laughs> <laughs> that doesn't count. And All right. Civil war. Iraq war. Vietnam. Yep. Good job. Cold war. Okay. What is Coach Galini's favorite sport other than hockey? Boxing. Yep. Good job, Luke. Let's go. Mm -hmm. Okay. All right. Who won the last Stanley Cup? Jacob. Oh, man. They played against the Predators. How do you not know this? That's bad. <laughs> wow, I'm so bad. <laughs> go ahead. Luke. Pittsburgh Penguins. Pittsburgh. No. All right, last question, guys. Who is the second president of the United States? Adams. Yes. <laughs> well, no, all sadly, <laughs> sorry, Jacob. Oh, Hang right. tight, Luke. <laughs> Division One center Corey Delisle joins us for round two. You ready, guys? I am. All right, do you know the rules? Yes, ma'am. Perfect. All right, y'all ready? Okay, at what temperature is the boiling point of water? Wait, oh God. Right. Fahrenheit or Celsius? Ooh. Fahrenheit. 212. Yep. Good job, Luke. <laughs> okay. Question number two. What are Coach Galini's biggest pet peeves? Um, wearing, all right, not having a pen, um, not wearing a watch. No. Wear You're wrong. <laughs> <Ooh>. <laughs> Uh, not having a pen, being late, and uh, sleeping. No. <laughs> Sorry, guys. The answer is sticks off the ice, absence of communication in practice, and slow starts. Hey, cool. Y'all learned He does hate those things. <laughs> those things. Okay, true? question number three. What animal has the largest brain in the world? Luke. Whale. No. Octopus. No. It is a sperm well. <laughs> <laughs> I guess I could give that no, to you. No, no, no. <laughs> no, no. no. <laughs> Sorry, it's a, it's a specific well. No. Okay, all Got right, it. guys. All right, next question. No Who taken. scored a record 10 
hat tricks in an NHL season? Wayne Gretzky? Yes, like, I don't think this thing works. Here, do you this. want to practice? Go ahead and practice. Okay. All right, we're You're good. Okay. How would you describe Coach Galini's perfect day? Uh, <laughs> 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 um, I would say wake up early, uh, Ron, um, and then come home, spend time with his kids, and uh, go win hockey games. What, do you, what day of the week do you think is his favorite? Uh, game days. Okay. You're going to get that. <laughs> Pretty much close. Okay. All right, next question. How many stars are in our solar system? One. Yes, the sun. <laughs> okay, last question. The first 10 amendments of the United States is called what? Bill rights. Yes. <laughs> uh, Corey, Corey takes this round. Yeah, it is. Right. Sperm whale. <laughs> Here is round three. Jacob Brown is back with us. You ready, guys? Mm -hmm. yep. All right. List the seven continents. Uh, North America, South America. Is that uh, fair? Africa, uh, Antarctica, Australia, Europe, and Asia. Wow. Let's, let's make a little fairness. Good job. Press the button after you start asking the question. Thank you. <laughs> if you know it, answer. What are the five basic freedoms mentioned in the First Amendment? Uh, freedom of Corey. speech, uh, right to bear arms. Mm -mm. Uh, <laughs> no. <laughs> Sorry, I'm going to stop right there. Never mind. Yeah, you you don't even look at that. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Who is credited with the invention of the printing press? I know that. Thomas Jefferson. <laughs> no. <laughs> oh. For some reason, I think his name's William. No. No. Nope. It okay. is... Joanna's Gutenberg. Yep. <laughs> that, was, that was my second guess. <laughs> okay. All right. Just Next question. That. <laughs> <laughs> Which NHL team's mascot is Bernie the St. Bernard and named the blank avalanche? Colorado. Yes. Good job. Okay. Where did the 1980 Olympic hockey game between U.S. and Russia take place? USA. <laughs> what what town and state? Uh, I got it. Lake Placid. Yes. New York. Yes. Okay. okay, let's get some. You gotta wait till she's done asking the question. No, you don't. That wasn't in the rules. <laughs> <laughs> okay, what are Coach Galini's habits or routines on game days? Take him. Um, he listens to music. He <clears throat> he always recites his speech before coming down to give it to us. And he makes sure to talk to the guys for the game and let them know or let them know what the, his expectations are for the game. Yes. Good job. Okay, last question. It's tied right now, y'all. Oh my gosh. Okay. Yeah. All right. What war took place in the US from 19, 1861 to 1865? Civil war. Oh. So. Wow. <laughs> Well, we have a tie between Corey and Luke, and we're going to ask you guys one more question to see who is the trivia champion. You guys ready? Yes. All right. Entomology is the science study of what? Bugs. Yes! <laughs> Luke. It's rigged. That's his major. Congratulations. <laughs> Congratulations, Luke. Thank guys, you. Guys, thank you so much for joining us. I hope this gave you all a little... Excitement. Thank you so much for having us. Yes, thank you yes, so much. Good luck Appreciate for the rest it. of your season. Thank you. Welcome back to Pucket, guys. I'm Shane White, and I'm joined tonight by Dominic Delagardia and Tyler Valentin. We're going to cover some hot topics in, in hockey right now. So we got Dallas game coming up tomorrow against Winnipeg. Dallas is seven and five. They're third in their conference. Winnipeg's four and four. They're second in their conference. What do you guys think? You know, Winnipeg's had a real hot start. Um, you know, I don't really think that their conference has had as much. I mean, as far as like they've been playing a lot of Canadian teams right now. Um, haven't, Dallas has been hitting a lot of the more West Coast teams like the Sharks and uh, LA. They hit Edmonton, Pittsburgh. So I mean, they're not doing as hot as they would like to. Not as the start that they wanted. But you know, Radulov's doing well. He's putting up points. And Ben, they have some good chemistry going on. Hopefully, we can see more of that. What about you? What do you think? 
it's a marathon, not a sprint. So if you get started off uh, on on a bad note, there's only a you can only go up from there. So as far as Winnipeg goes, you know it's a long season. Uh, you know they might bounce back, they might not. But uh, the Stars, you know us both being from the Dallas area, we're huge fans of them. Um, you know they got their new coach or returning new coach Hitchcock. Hitchcock. Yeah, what and then they beauty. got <laughs> and then they got uh, Ben Bishop back there, and they've added a lot of uh, good guys. Uh, a lot uh, of young talent yeah. too, but I mean something that they can really develop and to make me a Stanley Cup run team here next five, ten years. Good. Well, that's probably what y'all like to hear. <laughs> so overall, you think uh, you think they got the win tomorrow? Uh, I mean, if they play hard and the Ben Sagan line really produces, then uh, I think they could really have a good shot. But uh, it's hockey; you never know. Talking about never know, Pittsburgh, last year's Stanley Cup champions, uh, they keep getting blown out. Uh, seven and one by the Jets, seven and one by Tampa Bay, ten and zero with the uh, with the Blackhawks. You guys, what are you, what's going on with them? Turn the page. <laughs> Turn the page. Yes. I mean, uh, you know, last year's history, tomorrow's a mystery. So, you know, you can't uh, have the Stanley Cup hangover like they have. Yeah. I mean, they lost their first game, I think, ten to one to the Blackhawks. Yeah, it was. They got blown out by the Blackhawks. Yeah. And so the Hawks have not been doing too well this season. So yeah, you know, it's. I don't know. For me, as a Capitals fan and a Stars fan, I love seeing Pittsburgh fail. Love it. Well, yeah, because I'm a huge Chicago fan. I hate Pittsburgh. Really glad to see them uh, get, get beat on pretty good. Um, I mean, I just I don't know if they can come back this season at all. It's hard to say they can't come back because I mean, hockey's honestly one of those games where you can go from before the fall like break or fall, or for the winter break. I mean. Uh, you can go from a last place team to really turn it around. I mean, you saw that with the Kings when they won the cup a couple years ago. They were the last place team in their division, a uh, wild card team in the playoffs, and then from worst to first. Did they lose any of their star players this year? Which, which team? Pittsburgh. 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 They lost Flurry to Vegas, um, which is a new expansion team. They also lost. Uh, I forgot who else they lost, but they lost someone else. It's pretty good. Well, let's talk about Vegas. Um, powerhouse in their in their new team in their new spot. Yeah, they're doing really well off to a hot start. Six, two, and a, uh, one in their last what nine games now. So uh, James Neal is the real deal, it seems. Yeah. Cool. Uh, well, last thing, 25 years ago this month, the Mighty Ducks came out. Did you guys watch it? Oh yeah. <laughs> I grew up on it every <laughs> single day. So it influenced kind of kind of your style of play. Uh, <laughs> not at all. <laughs> we don't run the flying V. It's on the playbook. So, <laughs> well, who's not your favorite? Five. <laughs> who's your favorite characters? Goldberg. Goldberg. I I loved Anderson. Or wait, that was his name. Or the fighter? No, the kid with the glasses. Um, no, problem. not him. Uh, I don't know. <laughs> yeah, I just remember remember Goldberg. Yeah. All right, guys. Well, thanks for joining us. Uh, that'll be it for tonight. Back to you, Maisie. Thank you. Well, sadly, that's all we have for you today. Don't forget the D1 squad takes on the Central Oklahoma Broncos tomorrow at 830 at the Jones Center in Springdale. Be sure to tune back in on November 15th for the second episode of Puckett. I'm Maisie Vincent. Thanks so much for joining us and have a great evening.